Welcome everyone. This is episode 18 of the Rose Hip Knits podcast. My name is Hannah. You can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. Today we're having a very windy and overcast day here in northern Tasmania, Australia. My two little girls are occupied with um, their own things. The little one is sleeping, so I took this opportunity to to uh, record. The, um, my older one, she's home from school, but she's um, happy playing inside. I have the door open, so don't worry. She can come out and get me if she needs me. I um, was really good, and I cleaned and vacuumed this morning so that I could grab the opportunity when my little one fell asleep to podcast because I really wanted to get an episode out today. I think I'll have a couple of busy days ahead of me, so I'm not sure how I would go with recording then. Anyway, let's not get into that too much. Um, Sorry, I keep doing that. I shouldn't do it. Um, so yes, this podcast has been going since March this year, so I'm very happy that it all is going well and that I have this little knitting outlet and craft outlet and that I have um, been able to come in contact with so many people through this. It's been wonderful. I'd like to say thank you again and I, I hope I say thank you every week, but big thank you to anyone who's watching, who's been um, subscribing and joining the group on Ravelry and all those things. And I love any comments and messages you send my way. So thank you, everyone. Today I have finished object. I have some works in progress with knitting. And um, I received a swap package. So I'll show that in the end because it has some quite cool things in it so I'll show that for anyone who's interested in that and um, first off I think I'll talk about the dialogue that we have going and for this month September we have a dialogue and it was um, suggested to me that we'll do a dialogue and I said sure why not and I started sometime late August I think and it's going until 30 September and I'd just like for um, viewers to try the hand of dyeing or try any sort of dyeing that they have not tried before, any sort of method that's new to you or any sort of yarn base or fibre. Just try something new and have fun. And don't forget to post photos of your finished dyeing um, objects in, in the thread in Ravelry. And you can find that thread in the Ravelry group, and it's, you can just find it by searching for Rose Hip Knits podcast. And um, yes, it's been just great to see all the um, adventures people have been having with food dyes, natural dyes, acid dyes, and there's some great skeins um, up there in photos in the finished objects thread. And there's been um, good advice and just. Um, some good, good chatter happening in the chatter thread. So there's still um, a few days, almost 10 days to enter. So please join. I have this bag from Katie of Knit and Stitch Bits on Etsy. She gave me this um, project bag to um, give to one of you for a price for the dialogue. And it's a wonderful bag. And um, this past week, I also uh, was in contact with Claire of the New Hampshire Knits podcast. And I mentioned that podcast last week when I talked about some of my favourite audio podcasts. And um, Claire, just on Friday, I think, released a sock pattern called Agatha, I think is the name. And that's one of her chooks, I think, <laughs> which is pretty cool. And uh, it's a lovely sock pattern, and um, she has given me one um, to give away for a prize. So we have a second prize for our dialogue, and I'll show you some photos of those wonderful socks.
So that's the dye along. Please join in. Um, it's lots of fun to dye, and I think a lot of people um, are finding that out by giving it a go. I have um, some more thank yous actually. Um, so, big thank you to Claire for um, giving us the pattern for her socks, and she also really uh, generously gave me a copy. So, um, thank you so much, Claire. And I'd like to say thank you to Mina for mentioning the dialogue. I, I'm hoping that she'll get time to enter. She um, she did buy some. Um, white yarn when she went to New York and uh, I think she has it ready scanned up and she has some uh, food dyes that I sent to her when she won the travel along price so I hope you get a chance Mina but thank you for mentioning the dialogue I hope maybe some other people sort of um, got to hear about it that way and another exciting um, thank you um, Sandra of Sandra's craftfulness and she's craftfulness on Ravelry she's been a viewer for a long time I think I've sort of been in contact with her a few times and um, she let me know that she started her own podcast and the podcast is called craftfulness podcast and she did a test episode and then her first episode I'm not quite sure maybe one two weeks ago uh, but I, I watched that and I really enjoyed it. Sandra, she makes some beautiful bags, really inspiring uh, bags, and um, she has them up on Etsy. And I'll link to these things in the show notes. And the show notes you can find at um, rosehipnitspodcast.blogspot.com. So um, go ahead and have a look there if there's anything I talk about that you're interested in. And also, for all of the projects that I'm working on, I I keep um, quite good record of them in my uh, Ravelry pro project pages. So have a look there for yarn and needle sizes or patterns, anything like that that um, I might forget to mention. Or if you just sort of, uh, if I'm not clear enough, because that happens quite often. So there, thank yous. And. Um, we talked about the dialogue and I think I'll go ahead and talk about some knitting I have been doing. So I have been doing a bit of knitting since I last um, talked to you. We did um, have a weekend away or three days away house sitting out in the country a bit and um, that gave me a bit of um, time in the quiet and uh, with not a lot of interruptions around to um, get some knitting done and um, yes I did post a few photos on Instagram so you might have seen it's a very beautiful spot and um, it was a very nice few days because then we got back and I started my new job so I had then um, two days of my new job working in a lab and that was um, a job was it was good it was nice to be back in a um, science people and yes it was nice I was quite tired by the end of the day and the girls were quite tired because my eldest she was in after school care and my youngest was at um, the child care and um, yes it was just long days for all of us and then we just had this weekend where we could um, relax and recharge our batteries <laughs> Anyway, I've got some knitting done and I'll show you those. So this is one of the things that I was knitting on when we were out in House City. And this is the Phoenix Hat by Sally Jane Cameron of the Pink Hair Girl podcast. And I knit this in a um, skein of wool that I found in my stash. And I'm quite sure it was given to me part of the swap. I think it's 100% wool and it's sort of a deep red colour. I'm going to have my hair down so I can try it on and see what it looks like. Oh now the sun is doing funny things, funny things outside. So 
so that that looks like I thought when I was making it that was um coming out quite large but it's not it's it's uh, it's actually quite good I made an adult medium no adult small size I made and this is a um, fingering or a light fingering so it's it made a very light fabric which is really nice but I think this will still have to um, be put away until uh, autumn because it's getting too warm here now to wear beanies but um, yes it was a very nice pattern I sort of had this as, instead of sock knitting because normally I will have socks to knit on for any time of waiting or just being able to pick up some knitting for just a short amount of time and I have to be able to just put it down whenever I need to and this was um, good for that once I was sort of well during the whole whole knit actually but I did that and um, yes it's a very nice pattern if you're after a nice hat pattern this is a good one to get I think it's about two dollars US something like that not very much and the profit goes to a um, burns unit at a hospital in South Africa where Sally Jane lives so it's for a good cause and I was very happy with that I think it used just under 50 grams for me so I still have all this left in my little penguin bag that I made <laughs> so I finished that and I got quite a bit done on it so the other thing that I showed you last time sorry I have a tea break I'm drinking my green coconut tea again and I actually brought the label for it this time this is just what I tore off the packet it's a loose leaf tea green tea coconut and um, I just got this at my local supermarket Coles and it's nice Okay, back to the knitting. The other thing that I'm pretty sure I had started last time, test knit of a shawl for Carolean of the Sasu Yarns and Sasu podcast. Um, she has shown this shawl in its finished glory on her podcast and I am sort of, I think I'm in on the last section now before the border. And that's what it looks like. You can't really see so as you can see I've had to modify a bit I was using this green ganasco bambi oh, I'll show you this later. I'm sure I've shown it several times because I have used it before green ganasco bambi merino extra fine in the color 184 which I think is olive they call it it's a nice green I love the pattern. I just really enjoy knitting these um, stitches that Caroline has, I think, come up with herself. And uh, it's been great knitting in the evenings. It's this fun things happening, but it's there's also a lot of just niche rows, so it's been good. But I came down. I was in the last section, and I realised I was quickly running out of yarn. And uh, I wanted to change the color. First, I had a look for D stashes and online shops and the local yarn shop. And the only place I could find it was um, a Morrison Sons in Melbourne on their online shop. They actually had this, but it was I think eleven or twelve skeins for fifty gram. Eleven or twelve dollars for fifty grams, and then it's like eight dollars shipping. I thought I, I have yarn surely <laughs> and also it would take a week to get there so I wanted to get a discount so I thought okay I'll just have to put in another color earlier than the border but then I was um, in a in a spot where it wasn't a good place to change I was sort of in between these rows of the lace and the nice way to change the colour is so that you get that um, nice change of colour where they 
the two colours meet in the little special stitch there. So I had to tink back a few rows and then do the new colour to get it like that. And hopefully I'll have enough to then wear the border it's meant to start and then I hope I have enough of this. This is the raw mice, the pure, I think, in the Sabrina colourway. And then I think I'll use this for the just a border. So I'm I'm hoping <laughs> hoping this will work out. I'm really excited about getting it off the needles and just see what it looks like when it's all nice and spread out. But that um, Gringanasco Bambi, it's actually a three ply I discovered now when I had to go and look for it. It's been in my stash for a long time. I got it at, um, in a D stash. And when I asked the local uh, wool shop here if they had it, she said that they discontinued this one um, eight years ago, the, the Bambi. <laughs> so I was surprised then that I actually had it in an online shop, uh, Morris and Sons. Anyway, it's a three ply I discovered now, so that's probably why I keep running out when I'm using it. But it's really nice and lightweight for a shawl, so I'm really happy with the fabric of it. So, showing you one more time. And so, yes, I think there's another five or so days before Caroline wanted it to be done by the test knitters, so I'm not exactly sure when she's planning on releasing the pattern. She's out traveling now, so she's um, busy enjoying herself. So, but I, um, I'll make sure I let you know when that pattern is released. Hopefully it will be done by next time. I'm using a 3.5 mil millimeter needle for that one. And then um, what I have sort of on my needles are also the Perline cardigan that I haven't touched and um, the colour work mittens that I also have not been working on. So I cast on new things and um, I think the first thing I cast on after that was the socks that I told you last time I was going to cast on. And I now have two beautiful cakes. Of this this is the opal surprise yeah color 4061 so I'm doing these on two different needles two different nine inch circulars I managed to get them sort of matching without wasting too much yarn and on this one here I'm at the spot where it changes to a purple and I thought that's when I stop doing the ribbing. So I'll just keep going on this one a little bit more and then it's just plain knitting. And this time um, I'm thinking about changing the heel. When I've been using these needles before I've, I have done an afterthought heel because I thought that was just the easiest that I could just keep knitting and do the heel and toes at the end. But I've been wearing the socks, that I think it was maybe the first socks I made on these needles. They're just vanilla socks and I didn't have the thought heel. And um, I'm not sure that I find them very comfortable. I can, maybe it's how I seemed in the ends, but I, I feel like I can actually feel the seaming. And um, if I could do like a fish lips heel, which I quite like, then I don't get, then I only have the end at the start, like at the top of the calf, top of the leg and toes to weave in and mm, yes, I prefer to only have the two but I'm not sure how to do that on a 9 inch circle, I have to get them off the needle, put them on like magic loop, do the fish lips, kiss heel and then put them back on a 9 inch, so I'll just see when I get there what I would like to do. <laughs> Of those in my Chasing Acorns bag, which I really like, and I um, got this in a dialogue by the Dias Notebook podcast. Such a well made bag, perfect for socks. So I cast those on, and they've been great 
like I normally do with those socks that I have on those needles, the vanilla socks. I just sort of keep one with the, by the computer and one in the kitchen when I'm in the house. And um, any time I have 30 seconds or more, I'll just pick them up and do a bit of knitting and put them down whenever I need to. So they're great to have around in the house. But then Claire sent me the pattern for the Agatha socks. And um, I couldn't help myself. I had to cast them on. And especially since I saw that one of the yarns she used in her samples was the Regia Tweed in the same colourway that I have. And I, I got that not very long ago from is it Love, Love, Love Knitting in the UK. Um, when I had free shipping, or they had free shipping, I just got, um, I think I got a like a sport weight tweed and a just a fingering. So I just started on the cuff, the twisted rib, and I'm doing this on um, my super long Addy two millimeter needle. I think this is 150 centimeter, so that's longer than the 40 inch circular. I don't know what it would be, maybe 50. Anyway, um, this is how I always used to make my socks because I got these needles on a sale probably somewhere online, you know me, and I was never really bothered by it. But now when I've been doing um, my socks on a 9-inch circular and when I need to do a magic loop, I do just the 80 centimeter, 32 inch I think. So now this just seems... Oh, I just get tangled all the time. So I'll see if I get used to it again or if I just have to <laughs> change needle. I don't even know if I have another 2mm one. But I chose to do the 2mm one because of the stitch count. I think if I just um, if I do it on a 2.25, they might end up being a little bit too big for me. So I'm doing 2mm and hoping um, they'll fit nicely. So this is the Regia Tweed in the 00090 colour. So that's that's the colour one. That's the just the dye lot. Yes, so and um, they're just it's just perfect pattern for a tweed I think and I had been wanting to use this yarn and not sort of have it sitting around in my stash for too long and when I saw the pattern and made in this yarn I thought yes and this is another the bag that I made and this is actually um, leftovers for from cushions that I made for our sofa and <laughs> I'll give you some advice. Don't use the same <laughs> fabric for your knitting project bags as you're using for cushions because they get lost <laughs> in the sofa and you might think it's a cushion but it's actually a project bag with pointy needles in. So, a bit of advice there. Put it sit nice little bag again. And I have to show you, um, I think I was going through my little basket of project bags and I needed a larger bag to put small knitting project bags in when I, we went away last weekend. And I found this one. This is um, a bag that a girl in my knitting group in Hobart had made up for when we went and did some knitting in public in Ross. Let's see, Ross there. It's uh, They have the Tasmanian Wool Centre. It's sort of halfway between Launceston and Hobart here in Tasmania along the Midlands Highway and we met, met up there so this is from 2009 as you can see and we met up there to do some knitting public at that wool centre and that wool centre is pretty cool they have like a little museum and they have some different um, fleeces and things that you can uh, have a look at and touch and they have a little shop there with some yarn and other things but yes I found that it made me happy and it's really good to keep all these bags, you know, stuff that I keep having around. <laughs> so 
that's my knitting and I have not been sewing or dyeing you can see the skeins from last week there I was going to um, do that gradient um, dyeing that I have been talking about for this dye along and now I've, I've actually wound one skein <laughs> that's how far I got this is the for those of you who have watched before this is the yarn that I made the raindrops jumper raindrops tops for my daughter out of it's a pattern by tin can knits so I have 50 grams left of this that I use for her top and this is what I use something I just got at spotlight for about two dollars a ball and I still have I think four of these left <clears throat> So I thought the way I'll do my gradient is by having three 50 gram skeins and I'll have a dye bath, I pop one skein in, wait for X amount of time, put the next one in, wait again for X amount of time, and put the third one in and that way I'll have three skeins that are sort of creating a gradient. I think I'll do that instead of having the gradient on just a one skein. Yes, I might do that another time, but I think for this time I'll do that and then I'll have like three skeins that I can use for a shawl for a gradient, maybe. Um, yes, so that's how dyeing <laughs> is going. Not happening very much there. Um, and I, I'll just um, I'll mention the thought that I had before I go ahead and show my swap packet. I am um, through this podcast and through meeting people online and having more people on my Instagram feed. I've actually um, discovered a few indie dyers and just small businesses like knitting related or craft related businesses in my local area, both Tasmania and like mainland Australia. And I've been surprised many times that I did not know about them before because I seem to know a lot about indie dyers and even yarn shops in in the United States. I guess because I get a lot of um, Well, a lot of podcasts that I watch are promoting or talking about these different indie dyes and the different yarn shops and things. So I know about them and I always go and like and have a look online and go and look at the Etsy and everything and just with shipping and everything. For me, it's it's too much to actually purchase anything, even though I, I'd really like to. But then, so I'm finding all of these um, Australian indie dyers and bag makers and um, yes, just online shops I guess um, and I had this idea that it would be fun to sort of maybe try to find one and talk about one every now and then not like a review necessarily just sort of saying hey I found this um, shop and um, this is what they have and if I can find information or if I can get in contact with them maybe get some more details and uh, yes so um, for anyone like for you out there watching do you think that would be something you'd be interested in um, yes it's just something that I'm, I'm thinking about at the moment so maybe I'll do that not something that's um, a, a long review that would take most of the podcast. No, just just a little short thing at the end, maybe. Anyway, now for the wonderful mail I received, um, I participated in the handmade and notion swap um, that Andre Sue of the Andre Sue Knits podcast was hosting, and um, I received my swap package, and I love it. So, um, my swap partner was Mary Sarah, and she sent this beautiful little card. And I'm pretty sure she made the card. Um, yes, 
and she's in. Oh, I forgot now. I want to get it right. I think she's in Las Vegas, and um, she sends this beautiful bag for me. I just love this. I just love the fabrics, and I just yes, love it. And it has the I'm not even sure what they call, but those little um, hard bands that I don't know what they call, but you can see they sort of open and will close again. So she sent that to me and I'm pretty sure she made it and it's I still have all the stuff in there that she put in the package for me so but then I'm going to use it for my little scissors maybe and other things that I need to have with me in my knitting bag so she sent me these beautiful stitch markers and they're called angel on my shoulder and they're made for the sin nitty sin city knits in Las Vegas so the little cats and your sparkly one. I love those. So they were in there. And then I'm guessing that the Sin City Knit Shop is her local yarn shop. Those also I think it's pretty cool that the and this one. Pretty cool that the yarn shop has their own little bits and pieces with their name on. My local yarn shop doesn't have that, but if they did, that would be a perfect thing to send in uh, swap packages. And then some highlighter tape, which is pretty cool. I've never had that before. So that would be great when I do charts next time. There are also some cards that... Um, handmade they're so pretty this is just one out of a whole bunch of them so thank you so much and um, Mary Sarah I'm so happy with my swap package it's all beautiful and now I can use it all so yay <laughs> so um, I think that's um, all for this episode. Uh, I can't think if I have anything more to tell you. I'm happy that I found the time to record this week. Um, it is still sort of a motivator for me to get the house organized and cleaned so that I can do this with good conscience. <laughs> and uh, yes, spring is here and it's wonderful and um, I hope it's nice where you are and that you're having a good time and um, please leave any feedback or comments um, on the episode or in the episode thread on Ravelry or just send me a PM on Ravelry I always love to hear from you if there's anything you'd like me to talk about or anything that you'd like for me to talk more about, um, please go ahead and let me know. And um, yes, join the dialogue if you haven't done so already. It's so much fun to uh, get your hands into the dying. So I'll, I'll stop now. <laughs> And I might just have a little bit of a knitting time before the little one wakes up and it's time for lunch. So take care everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye.